Hi. Last time we were making a flower using keyboard shortcuts to work in the layers panel so we don't have to keep constantly mousing over there. We've made the flowers so far using various shapes, and we've learned to use the keyboard to make new layers, move them up and down in the layer stack, and select different ones. We also found out how to fill only the active pixels on a layer and how to change blending mode and layer opacity without going near the layer panel. Then we gave the flower a center and learned how to move between related tools from the keyboard and how to interactively change a flat color without going near the color swatches. We did all of that without mousing over to the layer panel once. If you missed it, there's a link to the first tutorial in the description for this one. So here we are. I've taken the time to name the layers between the movies, but other than that, it's exactly like it was. All we need is a couple of gradients to give us some shading and finish up. So first let's make sure that pink is the foreground color over here in the color swatches. If it's not, you can tap X to swap the foreground and background color so that pink or whatever color you used for your flower is there. And now we want to move down in the layer stack which we'll do like we did before by using the Option key, that's Alt on a PC, and the left square bracket to move down to the Calyx layer. And now I'm going to make a new layer by holding down Shift and Command and tapping N. That's Shift Control N on a PC, just like we did before. That opens the New Layer dialog box so that we can name the layer. Name it Calyx Gradient and tap the Enter key for OK. And there we have our new layer. Now I'm going to tap the G key to get the gradient tool, and up here in the gradient picker I'm going to make sure that the foreground to transparent gradient is the one that's chosen, that the style is radial, that's a radial gradient there, and that transparency has been enabled. And then I'm just going to go down here to the image, click in the middle of the flower, and drag down to where I want the gradient to end, let go of the mouse, and I have my gradient. Which is pink because I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. To do that, I tap V to get the move tool like we did before. And like we did before, I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to use the plus and minus keys to change the blend mode. Here's the blend mode right here. Keep your eye on it. Um, you can also look at the image, of course. And I'm going to change to multiply. And now we have that done. But I would like it to be a little bit darker than it is, so I'm going to duplicate this layer, and to do that I'm going to hold down Command, that's Control on a PC, and I'm going to tap J, and there is our duplicate layer. When I was learning to do this, by the way, I remembered the J as just like it. I don't know if that will help you at all, but in case it does, there you are. That's a little bit darker than I wanted, so since I have the Move tool already selected, I'm going to tap 3 on my keyboard, and that will reduce the opacity of that layer to 30%, and that looks like I'd like. So I'm going to hold down the Option key, Alt on the PC, and use the right square bracket to move up to the Blossom layer. And now I'm going to make a new layer by holding down Shift and Command and Option, that's Shift, Alt, Control on a PC, and tapping N. So I make the new layer without opening the dialog box, which is a little faster when you don't have a lot of time. And tap the D key to get the default colors, X to swap them so that white is the foreground color, and G for the gradient tool again. And now I'm just going to, once more, click in the center of the flower and drag to where I want the gradient to end, let go, and I have my white gradient. But it's over everything, it's not just over the blossom. Clearly, we need to use the blossom as a clipping layer so that we only see the gradient where there are active pixels in the blossom layer. Can we do that from the keyboard? Why, yes, yes we can. All you have to do is hold down the Option key and the Command key, that's Alt, Control on a PC, and tap G for a special kind of group, and there we have our clipping mask. Notice that we have the layer moved to the right, and the little square arrow that shows that this layer is clipped to the one below it. And over here on the image, we only see the gradient where there are active pixels in the blossom layer. So that's pretty cool, huh? And all of that without going to the layer panel a single time, but sometimes you just have to. I would like to use the layer style that's on the leaves and the stem on the calyx as well, and in order to do that, I have to go to the layer panel, hold down the Option key, and drag the FX up to the next layer, which duplicates it. Sometimes you just gotta. But now, let's get away from the layer panel. We can start working from the keyboard again. So I'm going to hold down the Option key because I want to select all of the various layers that have parts of the flower on them and make them into a single group. So I'm going to hold down Option and use the bracket key, but I'm going to add the Shift key. So that's Option Shift right bracket. That's Alt Shift right bracket on the PC. To select the two layers above 
And now because I have those layers selected, if I use the left bracket key, I'll start selecting with the blossom and select down to calyx. And now that I have them all, I hold down the command key and tap G. That's control G on a PC and I have made a group. And now I can hold down the command key, that's control on a PC and tap T and I can enter free transform mode and I can give the group a tilt and I can move it where I actually want it in the composition and um, I can nudge it with the arrow keys and do anything else I want to make sure that it's just exactly the way I want it to be and tap enter to accept the transformation and there we are and that's that. Now a couple of caveats about using the keyboard shortcuts in the layers. First, if you have a closed group like we have here, you cannot get to the layers inside that group from the keyboard. See if I hold down the option key and use the square bracket keys, it treats the group as if it were a layer. It does not open it up at all. I can hold down the command key, that's control on a PC, and I can move that group up and down in the layer stack, but I can't get into it from the keyboard. However, I can get into it from the image. Just tap V to get the move tool and then right click and wherever you have active pixels in layers underneath the mouse, you will see those layers in a contextual menu. So I can just go to the layer that I want that's inside the group and I can click on it and I'll open that layer. You can also see why it's important to name your various layers. And now that I have the layers open and that group open, I can use the keyboard shortcuts to move around among those layers. But I can't do it with a group closed. So that's one. The second one is if you have selected all of the layers that you have by holding down the shift key and using the option or alt key depending on your platform and the square bracket. So you have them all selected like that. You can't select any single one of them because you can only select a single layer by selecting a layer that you have not already selected without the shift key held down and there aren't any that you haven't selected so you're stuck. Except, you, once again, you can do this from the image by just right clicking, choose one, and now once again you can move freely. So um, that's that. There are tons of keyboard shortcuts that I haven't covered, even some using these very same keys. For instance, the square brackets change the brush size when the brush tool is active. And um, some using this very same kind of thing. For instance, if you have a layer selected, and I'll just show you this really briefly because it only takes a second, you can hit the delete key and delete the entire layer. I'm going to undo that. But these few shortcuts that I've shown you should really speed your workflow and help you accomplish more in less time in Photoshop. So until next time, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope that you found this helpful.